I'm Julie Christie, and we're kicking off this season of TAP TV at Sun and Fun 2012. And we found Mr. Aaron Tippin, so we're going to talk to him a little bit. Um, Aaron, tell us a little bit about what got you into aviation. Your father was a pilot, right? My dad was a pilot. You know, a trade plane was laying on our table the whole time I grew up. You know, he got me into aviation. First time I ever put my hands on the controls of an airplane, I was four years old. It was a DC-3 that he was <laughs> captain on. And, you know, that, that graduated into... Uh, soloing on my 16th birthday and by the time wow. I was 18 I was multi-engine commercial instrument qualified and made a living as a pilot until I was uh, 23 and then the energy crunch kind of threw me off the track to go on to the airline so uh, I God threw me a bone, and I now I'm a country singer, but I'm still obviously in love with aviation. <laughs> well, now, do you come to Sun and Fun every year? I've come every year that I can. You know, really? and this year I'm getting to play here, you know, Thursday night, tomorrow night. Uh, I get to play here, so oh, it's really great. exciting. Oh, yeah. it is, yeah. So we're, uh, and this is the second time that i played at Sun and Fun. But, uh, and with the Commemorative Air Force this time, we have a we have a tour going on called Red, White, and Loud Tour, oh, where okay. it's, it's usually me and Fifi, the big B-29, right. sitting out there, and we do a show with her as a backdrop. It oh, is the most awesome. Incredible awesome. show in the world, but but due to the circumstances of the taxiways and stuff, we're not going to get to do the show with her. But we are over here in the uh, park, whatever it is, oh, okay. the theater in the park, the theater in the well, it's whatever it is anyway. But but it's a uh, it's it's a lot of fun because all the guys out in the crowd, you know, as many years I've been in aviation, they're all friends and pals. So we get to have a good time with a bunch of buddies, and and it's a it's a real fun show, <laughs> aviation based. You know, I to kick off the show wearing my my flight suit. <laughs> You walk around in your flight suit all day. You're trying no, to be in No, I don't. Right? <laughs> yeah, this is what I wear all day. <laughs> Believe me, they have to they have to get me to, to put on my fighter pilot suit. They have to it has to be something special. I should put it on for it's, you, I you guess. You should have. Why didn't you? Well, I don't know. I, that's certainly been special, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Um, do you own any planes right now? I sure do. Uh, right on the end of the corner there is my T-6. It's a checkered cowl and checkered tail T uh, yellow and black T-6. That's mine. It's actually s and J-4. I'll be slapped for saying T-6 instead of S&J-4. Man, I also have a Stearman. And I also have a J3 Cub, and I've got a 1959 Helio Courier. And, wow. Uh, got an old Wilga and just uh, airplane pole. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you very much for talking to us today. We really appreciate it. It is my pleasure. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Jerry Kirby. He is the lead for the Black Diamond Jet Team, and he is here at Sun and Fun 2012 with his whole crew. So, Jerry, tell us a little bit about the Black Diamonds. Black Diamond Jet Team was uh, formed in August of 2010. We had our first show season in uh, 2011. We, we flew uh, 80 performances at over 25 show sites throughout all of North America. Oh, that's great. So now how many shows do you normally do per year? Well, it varies. This year we're doing 20 show sites. We'll probably fly 70 performances throughout the year. Uh, that begins with a five-week training season beginning in February and then uh, from March, our first air show, and off we go all the way through November. Awesome. That's great. So now tell us a little bit about the planes and the new ones that have been brought onto the team. The team's comprised of five L-39. Uh, they're Czechoslovakian-made aircraft. Uh, it's codenamed of Albatross, and it was a uh, it is a trainer, uh, two seat single engine jet, uh, widely produced in Eastern Europe, and uh, and Czechoslovakia is obviously where they're made. And in the, uh, augmenting that, we have two uh, Polish built MiG-17 Fresco. Oh, great! And they have afterburning engines on them, so they add a lot of flair to the team. The the two ship of MiG-17s. Uh, the dynamics of the way they fly, that's new for the for the 2012 season. Okay, great. And how many Black Diamond team members are there? Well, we have eight pilots, so I have seven primary pilots and one alternate pilot. And then I have a, uh, a maintenance staff made up of approximately 10 people. All right, great. Well, listen, you guys are doing a great job out there. Thanks for coming. Everybody's enjoying it. And uh, we'll see Jerry up in the sky later. And now, the Black Diamonds from their perspective inside the cockpit.
here with the Aeroshell Aerobatic Team at Sun and Fun. And uh, we're going to talk to these guys and find out a little bit more about them. So why don't you guys tell me a little bit more about the Aeroshell Team? Well, we're, uh, we're kind of like the Thunderbirds and the Blue Angels, except we do it in propeller-driven airplanes. Uh, World War II close formation aerobatics, about six, eight feet apart. We've been around a long time. A lot of people have seen us, and we're still having fun and glad to be here. Tell me a little bit about your Texans. Have they been modified at all? Other than the radio panels and the paint job, other than that, they're box stock. I mean, you could take this, if you could put the airplane and paint it and put original radios and put it in a time machine, you'd roll it out on the on the flight line at a, at a school during World War II and they wouldn't know it from the, from the next one. Okay. Have any of your planes ever been used as Japanese Zeros? Uh, in movies. Uh, Allen's was. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, it uh -huh. was a Tor yes, Tor Tor airplane. It sure was in the movie. Uh, during the movie Tor Tor Tor. Mm -hmm. Steve's airplane used to be painted up as a as German and they used to shoot it down with a yeah, CAF. Sure. That's so. how I got started when I was 19. They would shoot me down, I'd die behind the trees and they'd blow up dynamite. And That's awesome. They made a few people, had a few heart attacks, so they went, eh, let's go back that one <laughs> off a little bit. But, okay, uh, his so. airplane actually has combat time, had bullet holes in it. Where was that at? That was in, uh, it was, mine was in the French Air Force during the French Algerian War, and it's yeah, got a bunch of bullet holes in it. All right, well, thank you guys very thank much you. for thank talking you. with us I today. <laughs> thank you. I am about to fly with the Aeroshell Aerobatic Team. I am so excited. I did not eat breakfast this morning because I didn't want to throw up in, in the plane or on Rob's camera because he told me he would kill me. I get to wear a parachute. Do you know what the problem is? I've never used one. I'm, I'm super excited. These guys are really great pilots. Um, we're going to be doing a, some crazy maneuvers. Not anything too crazy though. I don't know where the cord is. It should be an awesome flight. Anyway, there's no reason for me to even have a parachute on. So let me tell you what I have to do if something goes wrong. I have to take my blue seatbelt off, open the canopy, stand up and dive towards the wing on the airplane. These are the instructions I got before this flight. It, it's a little nerve-wracking. Now I gotta remember to do a lot of things if something happens in panic mode. So uh, let's just hope nothing happens. All right. Okay. Because I've never parachuted. Oh, by the way, these parachutes, they don't steer. No, no, they just soften the blow. So anyway, but we're going to be good. These guys are good pilots. We're going to have a good time. I, I get to work this all by myself. Mm -hmm. Yep. I can open it, close it all I want to. Now there's a throttle back here. But they told me not to touch that, so it's probably better if I don't, I think.
a loop. We got to do a barrel roll. He's a great guy. Thank you, Dean, Thank you. very much. We had a ball. <laughs> The Boeing B-29 Superfortress played a vital role in the air war over Japan during World War II. Operating from bases in China, India, and later the Marianas Islands, B-29s flew bombing raids over mainland Japan as well as other targets over Southeast Asia. On August 6, 1945, a Superfortress made history by dropping the world's first atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Three days later, another B-29 dropped an atomic device on the city of Nagasaki, compelling the Japanese to surrender and bringing an end to the war. The B-29 continued to serve in the Korean War era, eventually being retired as new jet-powered bombers made them obsolete. The B-29 represented a huge leap in technology over predecessors such as the B-17 Flying Fortress. The 29 was pressurized and heated, offering comfort and warmth to its crew without the need for bulky oxygen systems. A long tunnel running over the bomb bays allowed the crew to move between sections of the aircraft while maintaining the pressurized environment throughout the ship. After retirement, most B-29s were destroyed for scrap. However, in 1971, a commemorative Air Force pilot spotted a group of B-29s located in the California desert. An investigation revealed that the aircraft had been used for target practice at a U.S. Navy gunnery range. After much negotiation with the Navy and U.S. Air Force, the commemorative Air Force was able to secure the title to one of the B-29s. A CAF maintenance team arrived at China Lake in March 1971, and within nine weeks, the aircraft was restored to flying condition. The aircraft was then ferried to CAF headquarters in Arlington, Texas, for an extensive restoration. The aircraft emerged from restoration in 1974 and was christened Fifi. Today, Fifi is the last remaining airworthy B-29. TAP TV was honored to be invited to ride in Fifi and to talk to some of her commemorative Air Force crew. We are currently sitting on the world's last remaining flight-worthy B-29 Super Fortress. We are going to take off soon. We're super excited and it should be a great flight. So, keep watching.
I'm here with David Oliver. David is a member of the Commemorative Air Force. So David, tell us a little bit about Fifi. Now who came up with the name? Yeah, this is, I mean, the world's only flying B-29 Super Fortress, and it's actually named Fifi, which wasn't a combat name that the aircraft was given. It was actually, uh, the crew named it Fifi because of one of the major benefactors who got the aircraft out of the desert in the 1970s. His name was uh, Colonel Vic Agather, and uh, his wife was actually named Fifi, and so the crew named uh, the airplane Fifi in her honor. So have you ever had the opportunity to take a World War II B-29 veteran on a flight in Fifi? Wow, it seems like I get to take a veteran up about at least once a week. We go wow. to stops all across America and uh, the airplane right now is touring here in Florida and I bet we've seen so many vets that have come out. Some of them unfortunately probably in a wheelchair or, or, or yeah. in the later stages of their life. Uh, but some of them are still real spry and they climb right up that ladder and, <laughs> and jump right in the airplane and say, let's go. <laughs> That's great. Now tell me this, when, when you fly in Fifi, okay, how many gallons of fuel do you burn per hour? A is is lot. it painful to talk about? <laughs> it is painful. When you, when you measure in the thousands of dollars per hour, then it's definitely difficult wow. to, to swallow the numbers. But the uh, the engines that you see behind us here, uh, they, they use about, the airplane uses about 400 gallons of fuel per hour. Oh wow, tell me your most memorable moment with the plane. <laughs> yeah, I think my most memorable moment probably had to, to, to happen when we did fly a particular veteran who was really hesitant to get in the airplane and I think his uh, daughter had bought him a seat and a flight and uh, he really didn't want to do it because I think he associated so many memories of the war with the airplane yeah. but when he got in it and the, we first started up those engines you know and everything the, the smoke and the smell and the rumble and everything just reminded him of so many of his brothers that I think went to war with him yeah. and so the tears just started coming and uh, you know he welled up and really just kind of broke down and it wow. was neat to see kind of that emotional aspect of the airplane and just how important it really is to our American history. Yeah absolutely. Well thank you very much for talking with us today. Yeah thank and, you very uh, much Julie. Good luck on your flight. Fifi is a flying tribute to the men and women who built these aircraft as well as the brave men who flew them into battle. We would like to offer a special thanks to the dedicated members of the Commemorative Air Force who keep these aircraft flying for future generations to learn from and enjoy. All right, everybody, I'm here at Sudden Fun with Julie Clark. And uh, Julie is just amazing. Her, her, her aerobatic show is just phenomenal. So we're gonna talk to her for just a few minutes. Now, Julie, tell us, how long have you been flying? You know, Julie? Julie Christie. Here. That's right, two Julie. I, I hate when people ask me that, so I, I'll just tell you, I learned to fly in the, in the 60s. All right. Uh, late 60s. So, so you were like two? -ish. That's right, yeah, so they can do the math. <laughs> oh, all right, yeah. that's great. Now tell us a little bit about your plane. Mm -hmm. uh, I've owned this airplane now 34 years, we're 35 in wow. June. And um, it's an old military trainer built specifically for the U.S. Air Force and Navy. All right. And I bought it sight unseen on a government uh, surplus auction back in 1976. <laughs> yeah. Brave, right? <laughs> I've lived two husbands, so I've had it a long time. <laughs> tell us about the awards that, you, that you've won. I'll tell you about the ones that mean the most to me. Um, I was just recently inducted in the um, Air Show Hall of Fame. Awesome. I'm also in the Pioneer Women's Hall of Fame. Oh. And uh, the Showmanship Awards, the Art Show Showmanship Memorial Showmanship Award. So, okay, tell us this. Is there anything new for you coming up in 2012? Are you working on any new maneuvers or what's going uh, on? Not, not really because I fly to music. And every time I people think I'm, because I'm thinking, you know, I'm flying this song for 27 years, that people say, you, you fly to another song, I'm not going to come watch you anymore. And I <laughs> I've been, uh, Lee Green was a personal friend of mine. He gave me the rights to his song in 1984. He wrote the song in 1983. Oh. And now, you know, it, we're in all these wars and all this just horrible stuff that's happened yeah. to our freedom that's really intact, not, you know, if we don't watch it, we won't have our freedom. Absolutely. We're losing it and, we, and these foreign wars that, we're, you know, we're involved in. Yeah. And so now my song is really uh, appreciated because it's God Bless the USA and it's talks, you know, so I dedicate my heart to um, veterans oh, and great. also that's our amazing. current our current troops of which we have a lot out there yeah so absolutely um, yeah so it, there's really nothing once in a while I'll change maneuvers but as long as I'm flying to the music and I'm actually listening to it with my iPod right I'm flying right. to the music so um and red white and blue smoke and then we do the fireworks as well so that's great okay yeah. so two more things uh, tell us just real quickly about your book you have a mm -hmm. book 
Yeah, yeah, my book's been out since uh, 2004. It's called Nothing Stood in Away, Julie, Captain Julie Clark. All right. And it talks so a lot about how I pick up a copy of this. Um, up in Alaska. All Didn't right, tell my great. husband about it. And then when he finds out, he goes, well, where is it? I go, honey, it's just in Alaska. Come with me. We'll go fly it home. <laughs> What's it look like? I don't know. I've never seen it. <laughs> so back in the 70s, this didn't go over real well. <laughs> right. I, I tell people that airplanes outlive two husbands. So. <laughs> All right. And then the last thing is, is uh, tell us a little bit about your famous flying dogs. Uh, my dogs are Lindy and Bernie. And Bernie's been flying with me for 10 years. And uh, Lindy's a puppy that my grandkids decided I needed, so she's been only flying with me not even a year yet. Oh, but wow. But they flew all the way from California to Florida That's with amazing. me. That's amazing. So no, uh, no motion sickness? No. no. Do you I'm, strap I'm, them in? Do they have nope, like little nope, doggy parachutes nope, or anything? Nope, nope. They wear their mutt muffs, and we <laughs> uh, endorse that product. And that's Bernie's great. done aerobatics with me, so as long as you keep the G's positive, he's cool. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's cool. Julie, thank you so much oh, for your time today. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. We've had a great time here at Sun and Fun in Lakeland, Florida. We've seen some amazing things and we've had the opportunity to meet some really wonderful people. We'd like to thank all the volunteers that make this show possible and we hope to see you again next year.